Hello. <laughs> this is a weird one. I have a weird one for you today, and I'm actually very excited about it. Do I think the show is good? No. I think the show is actually kind of bad, but I still enjoy it a whole lot. And I think part of it is just because when I make videos about sort of standard animated releases, the Sea Beast is a great example. There's not really that much for me to say about it. I can talk about some of the technical qualities. I can talk about who is working on it behind the scenes. Okay, that's fine. Like, that's stuff you can find elsewhere online. Like, I, I don't feel like I have too much to add to the discussion. But with something like this, I don't know. For one thing, it, it just stimulates my brain in a way that these other sort of by-the-book pieces of animation really don't. And on top of that, for some reason, it doesn't feel like this project has been promoted much at all, and it doesn't seem like many people are talking about it, especially like Animation YouTube. Maybe some stuff is up by now, but when I was looking the other day, I really didn't see much. So here I am to tell you about Confessions from the Heart, and it's a show where Kevin Hart tells you stories, and that's the whole thing. This idea isn't completely foreign, right? It's, it's kind of the animated podcast idea, sort of. Basically, he's just talking into some kind of microphone or, or some recording device, and he's telling stories, some of which he's told before, and that's it. And then someone else animates it. So the way I'm going to talk about this show is that uh, I'm first going to talk about sort of the Kevin Hart component of it, the stories themselves, his involvement, all that, and then I'll move on to the visuals because the visuals by far are the most interesting aspect of the whole thing. Okay, so first things first, Kevin Hart talking into some kind of recording device. I don't have too much to say on this aspect of the show. I'm not going to talk to you at length about Kevin Hart as like a public figure, about his comedy. Um, I guess the one big thing to say here is that his storytelling in this show mirrors pretty closely a lot of his stand-up work, and I think that a lot of people would argue that this is what stand-up has been for quite a while now, is it transitioned away from just straight one-off jokes to telling stories. You tell stories from a unique perspective, build it up a whole lot, and, and do some theatrics along the way. It's just a garbage truck going by, don't worry about that. As for the stories themselves, I mean, they're fine. I guess in a way, some of these stories could scratch the itch of people who just like hearing celebrity stuff, like they like those shows where, you know, you see where celebrities live and the kinds of cars they drive and, and what they do with their time and everything and who they hang out with. I guess if you're into that kind of stuff, you sort of get that from this just by the nature of the stories, because the very first one he, one he tells is about getting in a fight with his personal trainer, which is like, um, okay, I mean, I, I personally can't relate to that a whole lot. One of these stories about spilling some kind of drink on Beyonce's shoes, he told at a late show years back, so there's that. It's just little stuff, really tiny little stuff that some of it might feel relatable, some of it is probably just like, I'm a rich, famous person stuff. And for the most part, I was kind of surprised that a lot of the stories worked just fine for me. Like, whatever you want to say about Kevin Hart, and there is a lot you could say about Kevin Hart, he's a good storyteller. Like, he can keep you captivated. He knows how to build up to certain moments. He knows how to put on this tone where you're with him the whole time. You're, you know, you don't get lost in the shuffle. Uh, you don't get bored all of a sudden. No, even if he's just kind of rambling on about a certain detail, you're in it. And honestly, that's really all there is to say about his stuff, I guess, other than the fact that he seems to just be recording in a room, like maybe on a couch or something. He is not in a booth. He's not in some kind of studio space recording this with a bunch of sound dampening around and all that into some kind of massive, expensive professional microphone. No, it really just sounds like he's recording in his living room or something, in a very large room, I'm sure. This is the story about when I, um... I basically spilt pineapple juice. And you hear room noise every once in a while. You hear some kind of background noise. And on paper, that's bad. That is not good audio recording. I myself 
with no budget go to great lengths to try to get some decent voiceover audio because I think it's important to my style of presentation and all that. Here, I kind of like that the audio quality isn't that good. If you just told me straight up that he was recording into an iPhone in like the voice memos app, I would almost be more impressed. And especially if you're the kind of person who's coming to this because you like hearing about celebrity stuff. I feel like this kind of enhances that feeling. It kind of makes you feel like you're in the room, like he's talking to just you. That works pretty well. Like if that was one of their goals, sure. But the other possibility to both the audio and the visuals, which I'll transition over to now, is that the whole thing was very low effort. And I don't know, I'm not here to tell you that it was low effort, because I don't know what was happening behind the scenes. I don't know what the budget for the show was. I can assume the budget was really not that high. That's the question that is just burning in my brain and has been ever since I watched it for the first time. I've watched it multiple times at this point, and I'm just fixated on this question of whether it's like some kind of joke, whether they knew and it was low effort on purpose, as if it was done rather quickly. Just a sensation I get from the whole thing. And I mean, you've been watching footage from the show this whole time. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. The visuals on this are insane. <laughs> They're insane. So we have our one style of character models, which is like Kevin Hart and any of his like friends or other people who are part of his story directly. They're all modeled in pretty much the same style. Not the most attractive style in itself, but at least there's some consistency. I think the hair in particular looks pretty wonky on a lot of these models. It just doesn't, or the way it was rendered, it doesn't look that great. But then on top of that, just other stuff. Everything else seems to be in a completely different style. You have these environments that, that don't feel like they fit the style of our main character models. And then on top of that, you have all these other character models for background characters, side characters, and it, it's just anything. It's just anything that could have been purchased from some 3D asset store. <laughs> if you're not familiar with that, you can either model and rig your own CG character models. Tons of time and work. You really need to know what you're doing. Uh, same with modeling backgrounds and everything. That's pretty hard to do. That's why people get tend to get paid a lot of money to do all that stuff. But if you just need something, if you just need some kind of asset to put in your project and you, you can't spend all your time on modeling and rigging and that stuff, you can just buy them. You can just buy them. There are online storefronts. You can buy environments. You can buy character models character models with rigging. You can also just buy animations that can be like copy pasted onto rigged character models. It feels like so much of what is here, that's the case. Maybe that's an unfair assumption. I feel very strongly about that. I feel very strongly that a lot of this stuff was just picked up from an asset store. It just results in this insane combination of like, oh my gosh, we have like the the weird stereotypical Italian chef who kind of has like a face like Gusto from Ratatouille. Just a, like a, not just a slightly different style, a wildly different style from the rest of our characters. <laughs> And he's just here. He's just here with everything else. The stuff in the background on one of these watches, I'll just have to only pay attention to background characters. Another thing about the backgrounds is that the render quality seems to be pretty low. Like you can see jaggies. You can see like stair step edges on some background elements and only on the background elements. What hardware was this rendered on? Like it's just not up to snuff for what most people would consider sort of an industry standard for 3D animation. I can't talk about the visuals and the animation without talking talking about the apparently just one guy who animated everything. And his name is Chris Broadway Romero. I know this because when they roll the credits for the first episode, his name is up there like five times. He has the sole animation credit. He has the director's credit and maybe a couple other things on there. The team was very small. Apparently there were no other animators. Let's take their word for it. So one person animated this solo which is in itself impressive and also insane because that's not really something that you would want to do most of the time. I went ahead and did some research. I learned more about Chris Broadway Romero and wow, there's actually kind of a lot of information to find. His official WordPress website is called broadwayallday.com. Uh, long story short, this dude has been working since like, I think 2001 is probably the earliest project he did and he's been doing a bunch of stuff, particularly music videos and promo videos and things for like, 
like rappers, hip hop artists, guys, stuff like that. He works very closely with 50 Cent on a number of things, including a news website that gets very good traffic many years later. He's also apparently now an NFT bro, and he has a video on here called Me Running to the Lab to Shoot a Music Video with Your Favorite NFT. I don't know what that means, but there he is. Apparently this is, this is Broadway. He's still doing music videos. And based on those, as well as the early work, I'm assuming this is what people come to him for, is this particular style of like, he must be self-aware, he must know. This this must be a stylish thing, right? Like a, like a style choice? I guess, do you see a reality where this guy doesn't know like how his stuff looks? And look at him, he's gotten a lot of commissions. He's worked with a lot of very famous people. I guess this is what people like about his style and if that's the case, I sort of respect it. I mean, not the NFT stuff. I'm, I'm very much against that. That kind of goes without saying. But um, beyond that, it, like if, if he purposefully phoned in his work on this Kevin Hart show, or maybe Kevin Hart himself was, was very aware of this stuff, and he thought it was kind of funny that it looked so ugly okay that's kind of like i kind of respect that but then for some of his actual music video stuff like yeah it's sort of in this like ugly probably mocap animated style uh, however the style is consistent for some of these videos there's like a cell shaded look to it that i think actually comes across much better oh look there's the yeti mic that's what i'm using to record right now i don't think it's much of a stretch to say that confessions from the heart is probably his worst looking project yet at least based on what i've seen so far i kind of love it for exactly that reason this is by far one of the ugliest professionally animated projects i've seen in a very long time to the point where i think it shares a lot of qualities just with amateur fan-made stuff online like i could absolutely see this being just a fan-made show where someone picked up some kevin hart interviews and was like oh I'll just i'll just animate something i don't know i have a couple bucks you know i have a couple of <laughs> unity assets let's throw those in there and this is the result and you know what kind of love it not a good show it's acceptable at times it gives you a couple laughs visually it's actively hard to look at but come on immediately more interesting to talk about than sea beast or even bad guys which i liked a whole lot or any number of new animated shows like it is something different it is something genuinely weird and i have no idea what the intentions were i don't know what the behind the scenes looked like on this also i'll go ahead and say this right now broadway if you want to do an interview i'm sure you're here in la it sure seems like you're based in la come on over we'll do an interview i think that would be a lot of fun unless you're trying to promote your nft projects in which case no i'll probably cut that out but you you know what? I think that's all for now. I do not have a lot of heady analysis on, on this show for you. I hope you check it out genuinely. It's on the Roku channel. It's a Roku original. I hope I didn't forget to mention that. And it's, it's absolutely worth the time. There's only one episode so far. I don't know whether they say four episodes. Or was that like four segments that are in one special? They also call it a special, so it's kind of confusing. The whole thing kind of seems like a mess. And I'm really glad about that. <laughs> That's all for now. Thanks for stopping by.